So three months later, everyone, and still I'm waiting to uh, have a proper interview with the West Australian Police. It's been a uh, pretty long journey, I suppose you could say. A journey of waiting, you know. It's been hard, guys, <laughs> hard been like a prisoner in my own home you know struggling even just to leave my house to go down the street to pick up my mail that's the worst thing picking up my mail have to go there when it's on the verge of closing you know three months guys and you know I thought at least one of these blokes might have come up and seen me made an apology and maybe I would have forgiven not just the one, I might have forgiven all of them. But, but no apologies. And these men must be shitting themselves, guys. I guarantee you, they'd be, uh, you know, living in the sheds probably, kicked out of the homes, living in the sheds. I don't know guys, I haven't heard nothing. But all I wanted was an apology guys, and it could have all been forgotten, you know. An apology and some sort of compensation, you know. Some sort of guarantee. But no. Nothing. You know, I've got... Like I say guys, I've got a mem memory like an elephant. But I buried all of this stuff a long time ago because it was so, so traumatic. And like I said previously, life just goes so quick, you know. You know, it wasn't a... Eventually I joined the army and after... In the army, you know, it's pretty hardcore in the army. And uh, once again, it just goes so quick, guys. You don't have time to think of your childhood. You don't have time because... Uh, you know, if you're ex-army or ex-navy, ex-air force, you know what I'm talking about. It's full-on, full-on discipline. You know, I've got something right here, guys. Right here. And I think that tells me the exact date of when it happened. And it's even got one of these people's autographs. On the date, the actual autograph. The person signed this diary here is the person why we got punished because of uh, my association with this person. That's the reason why I think I got punished. Like I say, guys, brothers looking after brothers. And there's many, many brothers involved from different families. But this is my old diary, you know. And it's got, a, like I say, it's got an entry with the exact date of when this serious sexual assault happened. You know, this sexual assault, kidnapping, deprivation of liberty 
you know there's so many things what these guys these young men did to me and my mates my me and my mate on that day you know I've wrote out a list of charges just by doing a bit of Google research on what these men could be charged with you know I've got close to 20 different charges and I'm not saying all of these men participated in the actual sexual assault but they were there and like I say guys they laughed they cheered and uh, I guarantee you afterwards there would have been beers drunk together they all would have had a party and like I've said before guys these blokes go on these camping excursions together still 40 years later they're all still best mates most of them are most of them are all still best mates 40 years later and I can guarantee you that I've been the subject of many many conversations you know you know what they did guys was torture aggravated sexual assault you know sex with a minor possibly sex with a minor under the age of uh, 15 minors not minor minors you know there's two possibly three victims involved in this guys and yet these gutless cowards are too scared to come up and see me to apologize I don't know maybe they've seen the police maybe something's going on in the background without you know me being aware of but over the last few months I've been undergoing you know psychiatric counseling for this trauma what's happened to me you know I didn't like I said before everyone I didn't plan on this to come back to haunt me I was triggered by one of the men who sexually assaulted me you know and when you find out the details on how close they were to some of these men you know it's going to amaze a lot of people in my hometown many many people are you know it's going to be a story told for many many years to come you know unfortunately you know there's the motives guys the first motive is brothers I think the second motive is maybe my father revenge for something my father did uh, my father yeah I'm just gonna say revenge for something my father did at the club maybe jealousy could be another motive but like I say everyone these pricks basically stalked me for not all of them but many of them was well, not many of them but some of them stalked me for decades you know and you know the worst thing about it was you know some of these men their mothers would come up to my house for Christmas Day and my mum would slay the guts out on Christmas Day cooking a beautiful roast turkey or a roast lamb or a roast chicken for these blokes mothers and these blokes were out like Dumble Young getting pissed with their mates you know not giving a shit about their parents and um, they had the nerve you know to destroy my family because they really did guys they really did destroy my my family you know because like I said previously you know I took out all my hate on those men on basically my mother even my sister maybe sometimes my dad you know I've said it previous I've said it before I've spat in my mum's face you know looked at my mum this far away from each other and spat in the face seen the saliva run down her face you know seen my mum cry had my mum scream at me threatened to even kill me you know 
and these bastards destroyed my life, guys. You know, I could have been a good, you know, I think I am a good person right now, but, you know, I missed out on so many, many opportunities because of what these pricks did. And they're going to, unfortunately, pay the price big time. You know, am I angry? Yeah, I am bloody angry. I am very, very angry. But, you know, that anger has slowly drifted apart or drifted away in the last few months. You know, I've also been really, really scared. You know, scared for my life. That's one of the reasons why I'm a prisoner in my own home right now. You know, I had to get security cameras for my house. So I can protect myself, my, my beautiful pets, my house. You know, I'm scared these bastards might try and burn my house down while I'm inside. Because that's the type of people they are, guys. You know, they're the type of people who'd burn your house down. You know, and these pricks are the ones who sabotaged my truck, undid the wheel nuts. Nearly, you know, I could have easily had a fatal accident. If it wasn't for a truckie who who heard the wheels making an unusual noise, I probably would have had a fatal accident, guys. You know, and these pricks really did undo my wheel nuts. Because I remember I'd be scrapping and they'd drive past my house just to check, check me out. Not one or two times, but many times they'd drive past my house. You know, I've got them on trial, ca on trial camera stealing my scrap metal. You know, they think I'm stupid. They think I'm stupid, guys. I'll tell you what, I'm not stupid. I've been around, you know. I'm very, very awake to what people are like. You know, these people are wolves dressed in sheep's clothing, you know. Everything's gonna be destroyed, you know. Like I say, the golden years on the verge of retirement and they're probably going to lose everything you know everything they've worked for they're probably go likely going to lose because of one silly silly incident what happened serious serious sexual incident you know I don't want to do this, but what choice do I have, guys? I, I need to uh, recover my reputation, what these bastards destroyed. Because they smeared my name, guys. They smeared my name. You know, I've seen them sitting outside their workshops, their businesses. I'm not saying they're business owners, but I've seen them sitting outside their places of employment, having a beer talking to the farmers, I drive past and all of a sudden they all look at me, drive past and you see movement, laughing and shoulders going up like this, laughing, laughing at me. And they thought I was stupid. <laughs> you silly buggers. You silly, silly, silly buggers. You know, what goes around comes around. Karma, you know. Silly, silly boys. Grown men. Grown men playing silly games that went too far. Destroyed a family. And now their families are going to be destroyed. You know. What more can I say, guys? So, that's just some of the things that have happened to me. Rape. Numerous serious sexual assaults throughout my whole entire childhood. When I say numerous, probably half a dozen to a dozen times. You know, these pedophiles everywhere. I remember them all. You know, extremely high men in my town who were pedophiles who tried to get onto me. Some who were kicked out of town being caught fiddling with kids, the same men who cracked onto me, 
You know, I'm not going to destroy their families' names. These men have uh, all moved on now. They, they're on the verge of uh, dying, you know, old age. It's up to them to ask God for forgiveness. And that's what I've said before. These men out there who hurt me, my mate, my mates, they need to get on their hands and knees and ask God for mercy, ask God for forgiveness, repent, confess your sins to Jesus Christ God. And then maybe if you've done that, come up and see me and ask me for forgiveness. Have the guts, have the courage to come and see me. You know, or arrange a meeting and uh, apologize to me for what you did to me. Because some of you people out there were so cruel to me, you know, you changed everything about me, my psychology, you know, you were supposed to be my role models, but you destroyed everything, you know, have the guts to get on your hands and knees and beg God, Jesus Christ, for forgiveness for all of your filthy sins. Because I know some of you men out there are definitely filthy bastards. Filthy. The filthiest of the filthy. The filthy few. What more can I say, guys? You know, you men have known me ever since I was a little boy, since I was a baby. I even think you might have done things to me when I was a, a baby. Tortured me. Or my mum was busy cooking you bastards meals at the club or something like that. I've got memories of you guys as teenagers. I remember you. You know, people aren't going to be surprised when they find out who these men are. They're not going to be surprised at all. You know, I feel so sorry for these men's families, even though some of these men's families knew what had been done to me. Like I said before, the kids knew what happened to me and these kids were not even born. And if they were born, they were basically newborn babies. When me and my mate were sadistically, sexually assaulted and tortured. And you had beautiful little babies in your houses. Beautiful babies that I've never ever had the opportunity to, to have and I never will likely have myself a beautiful son or a daughter, you know. So thank you so much for destroying and taking away my chances of ever having a little baby girl or a baby boy bastards you cowards you white feathered cowards you know look at me go I volunteered to join the army and the navy not that I didn't have much choice but I still volunteered serve my country you know and you blokes would be the cowards in World War One who'd get the white feathers sent to them in the mail. You white feathered cowards, that's all you are. A bunch of cowards. Gutless wonders. Thank you so much everyone. I really, really appreciate you watching this video. And that's it for now. See ya.